Cats and TV. Hey everybody, Cats and TV. And for Pi Day 2021, we are exploring the square root of pi. Like pi itself, its square root is an irrational transcendental number whose pattern of digits never repeats. We're going to look at some of the places it shows up in mathematics. But first, please do subscribe to this channel for more cultural content coming out regularly. And please do consider supporting us via Patreon or Ko-Fi. Links in the description below. Since ancient times, mathematicians have attempted to square the circle. That is, construct a square whose area is that of a corresponding circle. Recall that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So a circle of radius 1 has an area of pi. Thus, a corresponding square of area pi must have sides whose lengths are the square root of pi. Unlike the square root of 2, the square root of pi is transcendental and cannot be expressed algebraically. Thus, such a square cannot be constructed. <laughs> But it certainly hasn't stopped people from trying. In Ulysses, the character Leopold Bloom tries in vain to square the circle. There have been, however, valid approximations over the years. The great mathematician Ramanujan devised the construction in 1914 with pi accurate to eight decimal places. But the square root of pi shows up in some other, more surprising places. Take the Gaussian function, e to the minus x squared. It is important in probability and statistics, where it describes the distribution of random independent events like rolling dice. Lots and lots of dice. This curve extends infinitely in either direction, but it encloses a finite area defined by this integral. It turns out the value of this integral is... the square root of pi. Now proving this is beyond the scope of this video, but it is amazing to see e and pi come together once again. Now let's turn our attention to the factorial function. n factorial is the product of all the positive integers between 1 and n. It grows rather quickly. 3 factorial is just 6. But 10 factorial is this number. More formally, we can define the factorial function recursively for any integer, where n factorial is n times n minus 1 factorial, and 0 factorial is defined as 1. Simple enough. But of course, some joker out there is going to ask for the factorial of 1 half. It turns out we can interpret factorials for fractions, or even irrational numbers, using the gamma function. The gamma function is defined for any complex number using the following integral. And for any number z, the value of the gamma function is z times gamma of z minus 1. This relation looks a lot like the factorial function. And it turns out n factorial is equal to n times gamma of n. Plugging 1 half into the formula for the gamma function, we get this integral. Now if we do a little substitution where y equals the square root of x, or x to the 1 half, we get this formula, which looks familiar. Yes, it's the integral of the Gaussian function we saw earlier. Or specifically, half of that Gaussian function. Thus, we can substitute in the square root of pi over 2, resulting in the square root of pi. And since n factorial is n times gamma of n, 1 half factorial is 1 half times the square root of pi, or the square root of pi over 2. Do you have any other interesting facts related to pi or its square root? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Check out more at www.catsynth.com and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.